Hey everyone, it's new. Welcome to the long-awaited Promenade Farm video. Uh, I have been doing a whole bunch of testing, finally feel confident enough to come out with a video of the strategy that I found to make the most currency per hour on my end. Uh, quick disclaimer here, I am no longer running a Caustic Arrow Toxic Rain Raider uh, of about a 50x budget. No, now I have gone meta and I've gone kind of all in <laughs> on a Tornado Shot Magic Find Hybrid character. So my character has received a significant boost in his farming efficiency. Both in kill speed uh, is overall efficiency of clearing the map as well as actual just straight up buffs to uh, quantity of items found. On the Caustic Aerotoxic Rain Raider I, I had no quantity or rarity to speak of. On that character. Uh, I think at the very end I did finally equip one Ventus Gamble. On this character, however, I have a crystallized omniscience. Because I am running omniscience, it has a 5% quantity implicit on it. We got two pariahs. We've got a gold worm. That is a total of 55% quantity of items found. I decided not to run the gloves for 10% because apart from them just having horrible stats being basically useless uh they also don't give me rampage and i've decided that rampage particularly at a thousand stacks for the majority of the map is giving me way more value overall than an extra 10 percent quantity of items found if you weren't aware a thousand rampage stacks is 50 percent increased movement speed additive as well as 200 percent increased damage additive uh but being additive, uh, they are still enormous modifiers. And while you cannot expect to have a thousand stacks for the entire map, the entire time you're running the map, for the majority of that time you do. And in a farm like Promenade with Delimir, that's pretty important <laughs> to have that uh, particular stat running the whole throughout this, throughout the most important part of the map at the end. All right, so we're still running the goal. Still doing it, baby. Got those shrines. All about that shrine life. Um, I really enjoy this. Uh, it's not. It's not a meta, really. I mean, almost nobody's doing it. Uh, when I went to look up characters who are also running uh, tornado shot, magic find kind of characters, one other person at level 100, one other person uh, was using the gull. Not even hardly any, you know, lightning arrow characters as well. Uh, yeah. So that is just a quick disclaimer. On the gear, uh, I made an entire video about switching over to uh, this spec, and if you want to see or hear the details on that, go ahead and check that video. For this one, we're going to jump into the farm. We got uh, oh, one new major update, which is kind of relevant, I think, is I have a new six link. I decided to undo my ballista totem setup, which is quite useful for 100% delirious um, having that extra damage it, it basically doubles your damage when you have everything set up and you actually put the totems down and are using them however I decided to go animate guardian because I don't actually need that damage my character has about two mirrors total invested into this I mean over a mirror in the bow uh, and then between everything else basically an another mirror worth of uh, gear and s therefore, I've, I've set up my character, even with the significant nerf to my damage uh, via three separate uh, magic find items that basically don't give me any increase my damage or do anything for <laughs> my DPS. Uh, even with that nerf, th this character is just so powerful this season. It's, it's meta, it, the new omniscience amulet, it's unbelievably strong. So I can go magic find hybrid. And completely sacrifice a Ballista Six Link uh, and still do plenty of damage, even at 100% Delirious, as you will witness. Uh, so I've gone ahead and done Animate Guardian. A little bit difficult to keep alive in this particular farm, but I uh, manage. Um, just in case I have trouble, I have three entire sets of backup gear, in case you're wondering. It's Kingmaker, uh, Demon Stitch, Ephemeral, Bomber with Elemental, and basically Elemental Weakness uh, Curse. Uh, between the gloves and the boots there. Uh, not going to post any kind of guide on that. You can see those other people are way smarter than me on the anime garden and stuff. But anyway, I think it's a pretty good setup. And actually, uh, one thing that I was inspired from some of the other players that I'm seeing doing some magic find is this anime guardian slash 
summon stone golem setup. I, I wasn't really aware of this, but the stone golem actually has quite a lot of survivability too when you stick him in a six link uh, with all kinds of supports. I'm getting a whopping 156 regen out of this. And while I'm moving, because I have that mastery, I have a, a basically 220% uh, regen, which is giving me a, a great deal of regen. Kind of makes Desecrate and Burning Ground maps no big deal at all. Unless they also don't have Regenerate, then it is kind of a big deal. But for Burning Ground, of course, I can just change the Pantheon. On that note, I've made a couple major sacrifices to my gear. So what did, what did I do? I had to make some major sacrifices to achieve these kinds of numbers, right? To, to um, do enough damage and still run Magic Find gear. Well, one big sacrifice. Chaos Resistance. Zero. I have 0% Chaos Resistance. Not a big deal. Really, uh, I've seen other content creators talk about, you know, never have 0% Chaos Resistance. But in my opinion... For me, uh, maybe it's the speed and the consistency. I'm always shooting, always leeching. Get the regenerate from the stone golem. Not a big deal for me. Uh, I, I feel like, again, aside from like a map that rolls desecrate combined with uh, no regen, that would be a big deal. But uh, other than that kind of map roll, and I made sure none of my maps were double rolled that way. Um, it's, it's, it's nothing because the only range of threat for me is one shots. There's no chaos damage that's gonna one-shot me in a map. The only thing that even does just flat chaos damage is maybe the uh, on-kill nuke effect off of uh, Delirium Monsters. You see that kind of nuke, nuke, chaos nuke that comes in after. But, I mean, you'd have to be standing still for two seconds straight to get hit by that. So, <laughs> and believe me, I'm not standing still at any point in the run. Yeah, so there we go. That's a little bit out of the way on some of the gear upgrade updates. Uh, I do have some very specialized gear. There's a very specific way I've run my character. Again, you can check the other uh, video, the one I made just previously, uh, to see that if you'd like. Let's get into the investment. So I got three dump tabs. I hope it's enough room <laughs> to cover everything. We got uh, Sexton's here. Gloom Shrine. Yep. Still doing it. Now... I'm going to be running this map more than three minutes, more than two minutes. So I'm not going to be able to have a Gloom Shrine up for the entire time. So I have to, again, orient my strategy specific so that when I'm ready to go to the 100% Delirious section of the map, I want to have that Gloom Shrine on. Uh, it's insanely powerful because it's it's a, it's like a detonate dead, essentially, where it calculates based on the monster's health 100% delirious monsters have like 2000% increased health so it's insanely powerful uh, and I will definitely use it to my advantage that way also 50% uh, increased duration of shrine effects an additional shrine super super strong uh, just in general you I, I've talked about this <laughs> sextant time and time again uh, another sextant here so there was a lot of bit of testing going on I tested all kinds of various sextants I tested 100 traders I tested the Harbinger section, I tested Legion with Legion section. I tested almost countless other things. I decided to arrive with a strategy that was a little bit higher on the investment. So we're going with actual beyond as a section here because we're going to go real deep in on the uh, unique monsters drop corrupted items. It's a well-known section, pretty powerful, but most of the strategies you're going to see this league do not quite go this deep into it because I'm, I'm basically all my maps have beyond on them. And I have Beyond on here, plus I have Beyond on the map device, then I have Beyond on the Atlas passives. This is basically quadruple Beyond, if you count it that way. Triple Beyond if you don't count the Atlas passives. Uh, so most people aren't running quite this deep on the Beyond, but I do think it's worth it uh, when you're doing this the way I am. Let's continue here. Delirium Mirror, of course. We're going to be running a Delirium Mirror. Oh yeah, a lot of people just do Delirium Orbs instead, but you can't run 8 modded Corrupted Maps with the increased pack size if you're going Delirium Orbs now, can you? So, and just Promenade, like why wouldn't you take advantage of, of that fact? Plus, Delirium Orbs this season, Simulacrum Splinters aren't worth picking up one at a time. Not in a million years, not this time. But I'll pick up 300 Simulacrum Splinters at once, that's no big deal. Uh, or just 200, 250. Most maps I'm going to do are actually will get 300. Um, some I may get as low as like 150 at the very low end if I get to just get some horrible RNG map. Or if I mess up the map, you know, and I die or something, which could happen. <coughs> I doubt it will. Too much, uh, maybe one or two maps out of these 50. I might actually dub as incomplete. Uh, let's see, let's go to the Scarabs here. We're running a Gilded Harbinger Scarab, so I am running uh, Harbinger. 
slightly controversial, uh, but I have arrived on that one. I will explain. I'll just go ahead and explain now why I'm doing it. The big thing about Harbinger is they spawn a lot of rare monsters. They give you, they feed a lot of the headhunter buffs. When I, long story short, when I was doing my testing, one of the biggest issues I ran into was the snowballing of headhunter buffs, keeping that rolling, keeping it high. Especially given the fact that in a delirium map, like a linear map like Promenade, I got to run there and back, at least. In some cases, I was running there and back and there again. And it was creating some issues with me, you know, being able to run very quickly through the map. Because if I kill everything one way and I run back and everything's dead, or if I kill one way and I run back and do mechanics and they're very slow mechanics, I can't really snowball my headhunter buffs back up again and continue moving quickly and progressing through the map quickly. That's a problem. Harbinger really helps out with that because they just spawn the monsters and then, you know, you run through, you kill them all there. There's still some left because the Harbinger's still alive. You come back through the map, the Harbinger's got a brand new fresh spawn. You get a bunch of new headhunter buffs. You continue moving on. So it just really feeds into the headhunter snowballing effect. And that's actually really the biggest reason uh, why I go with the Sexton over, or sorry, the Scarab over, uh, I don't know, something like Legion maybe. Also, additionally, uh, if I go Legion, then I really have to um, do a Legion Sextant as well. And it, I would have to drop the Beyond Sextant to do that. I, I just don't see it worth it. So another huge advantage of the Harbinger Scarab is that the Harbingers are very good by themselves with no Sextant in addition. One major reason I did not go strong box this time is because, again, you have to use a Sextant. You really kind of want to use two Sextants for that. And I just don't have the Sextants to spare with this strategy. I got to use it. I got to use a Mirror and I have to use unique monster drop corrupted items if I'm investing this heavy. I don't have to use a shrine, but again, I'm building the strategy around that. And that just basically leaves me one sextant to play around with. And this is what I've arrived on here. Abyss, really annoying. I th This is the least favorite mechanic <laughs> of them all. Uh, because Abyss, especially on Promenade, can do some weird wraparounds. And sometimes I get really juked by the terrain. It can very much be a negative impact on the headhunter buff uh, snowballing. I kind of snowballing downward there on that. So in some cases, you may see me actually skip an abyss or at least part of an abyss. Uh, it's it's very tricky. It's, it's very high. It's very high skill cap and RNG involved with knowing exactly how to play around abyss when you're really trying to like progress through a deli mirror lin on a linear map. The map that has a lot of weird corners and balconies and stuff it can be really tricky and and it's definitely one of the most challenging parts um of this strategy but i feel like i have to go abyss because it just so it's just huge bang for your buck it just produces so many beyond monsters so many monsters in general tons of patient cards come out of it which leads me to the last divination scarab i didn't mention breach here but breach uh, i'm never not going to go breach it costs three passives and it's highly predictable highly deterministic huge number of monsters even on a linear map it's still a huge number of monsters just a very very good mechanic costs three passive points to do it a best costs only two passive points to get decent and then another four will make it really really good so it's only like six passive points invested in this and again no no sextant required so breach and abyss are kind of identical in the fact that there's just such such a small investment needed to make them incredibly juicy incredible amount of juicing up on the map of course nothing is going to really juice up the map more than running alva straight up so alva i have 101 missions left um one one part about this build is that i'll just go ahead and point this out now unlike my cemetery farm this farm is not highly self-sustainable to run this farm the way I'm doing, you, you, <laughs> first of all, you got to have the alpha missions. You got to pay more for the investments, which isn't that big of a deal. The maps is the really big part. Now you can run uh, uncorrupted maps like this, uh, but it's going to cost you, you know, because you, you, you can't roll beyond and get six modifiers on it to have a decent pack size. Uh, unless you're beast crafting more mods onto the map. Each beast craft costs about 20 chaos. Sometimes, you know, you roll it with six mods and beyond, but that's pretty rare. I, you know what? Especially with the new eight mod corrupted sections, I much prefer eight modded maps. And uh, honestly, I think it's actually easier to get eight modded corrupted beyond maps than it is to roll uh, uncorrupted maps with beyond and get them up to six uh, chaos. Certainly cheaper. 
The only the only issue, the major issue with getting maps like this, it's very time consuming. So I ran a lot of cemetery maps, and I had a promenade favorited lot the wazoo, and you know eventually I accumulated at least half of the maps I have here. I found personally myself, uh, especially the ones that don't have any. Um, chisels to them so like a map like this has no chisel it means it dropped straight up nobody actually uh you know rolled it that way uh so uh let's yeah let's just go ahead and leave it at that this is 50 maps the first one i'm run i will run uh, uncorrupted kind of a warm-up this will be a slightly less juice because the pack size is smaller but look i mean we're talking about that the difference here i mean this is 15 percent monster pack size difference here i mean i feel like you're really shooting yourself in the foot if you don't Again, if, if you go the route where you're juicing up the map pretty high and then and then you don't run eight modified, eight modifier corrupted, I mean, don't run it if it's too hard for your character. But again, I mean, that's part of the reason I built my character up as strong as he could, so he can handle 100% delirious on an eight modded corrupted map with essentially any modifiers on the map, aside from uh, elemental reflect, apparently doesn't work on my character even though hypothetically it should having some issues with elemental reflex so i decided to take that roll off and the other roll that i took off actually i won't run this roll anymore on promenade buffs expire 70 percent faster it's just terrible <laughs> it's just absolutely awful for shrines awful for headhunter buffs just in general it just really really hurts your uh the, the whole like snowball snowballing power creep upward effect you know it's really hard to kind of get that ramp up when you have that uh map modifier so i went ahead and make sure they aren't on there other than that everything's pretty well set this is a grand total of 27 exalts 27.2 exalts uh invested between putting beyond and the atlas for all of these maps as well as the cost of all of the sextants the scarabs will be tabulated uh, by themselves uh oh so actually it's it's more than that because we have it down here so let's go ahead and uh pointed out right here just take a snapshot real quick and you will see between dump tabs a b and c there's a grand total 41.2 exalts in here so that's counting the scarabs and the maps and the you know the extra costs that cannot be calculated which i have made up for by depositing them in here oh and it also counts for 18 i think no? Hmm. That's weird. One second. No, it's not showing up in hands. <laughs> okay. I thought it was going to show up on the the enhances were going to show up, but apparently they don't. So I have 18 enhance here, and I will level all them up, all of them up to level three. Now, I sometimes count gems. Uh, for the profit earning potential sometimes not Th this is a lot of juice on the maps it's a lot of gem leveling going on i am going to count it uh for this process plus i found a nice a really nice gem to level so i put them in here in these uh katarina uh, modded weapon and shield for eight percent quality to uh, the gem so i get a really fast leveling of the enhance empower or enlighten and i will level them up rather quickly and enhance particularly is in really good is in a really good situation right now there's no there's no easy divination card to farm for it and it's quite cheap even at level one it's only like 30 chaos maybe 40 chaos and then if you corrupt it at level three you level it up to corrupt it and it fails the corrupt it still sells for 40 chaos <laughs> actually a little more like 45 or 50 chaos uh but if you corrupt it up to level four it sells for four or five x so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to level all these up and I'll corrupt them all up and then we'll see how many uh, come out uh, to level four. On average, I should get two or three out of 18. Out of 18 uh, of them, I should, I think, get an average of three. Maybe just two if I'm a little bit unlucky, but uh, we'll see how it goes. I'm just going to leave those in there for now. You know the numbers. The number is 42... 41.2 exalts invested so keep that in mind we'll remember that and at the very end uh of the second half of this farming session uh we'll calculate the results on that i i, I gotta come out to you guys straight up uh, this this farm is not going to make as much as cemetery farm <laughs> it just doesn't I, I made 16x an hour in cemetery 
I, I found no strategy that earned me 16x an hour here. That said, this strategy is more deterministic, more, it's way more challenging, but it's also more consistent because there's no jackpot divination card you're farming. Again, we're farming a divination card, the patient card, and I'm going to see an average of about four, maybe five patient cards per map, which is way more than, you know, what you might be used to. But that's on account of eight modded corrupted maps with delirium with I believe when I check the map, it's going to say 40% beyond on the map. Running Alva, running Abyss and Breach combined. Harbinger, not, not super great for um, Divination cards. But yeah, there's just a lot of stuff going on. A lot of patient cards are going to drop. I've seen as many as 12 or 13 patient cards drop in a map <laughs> in total. I will be doing a few of the recipes here. Trying to self-sustain uh, some of the Temporal Bubble Treant Horde Mirror Image Rejuvenating. Not uh, not doing it like uh, a ton of them or anything, but just, you know, a few to try and self-sustain. And let's see, I think that's that's about it on on that. Oh yeah, one other thing. Oh, th these exalts and chaos here also uh, take into account an average cost of 20 chaos premium. 20 chaos uh, additional uh, per map. Because I, I did buy some of these maps. I bought some of these maps straight up for 20 or 30 chaos. I just had a live search set up and I just bought some. Again, I, I dropped some, so they were free. I bought some. I rolled some. You know, some of them are rolled that way. Uh, but altogether, I kind of average it out as to about 20 chaos uh, per map. You know, if you if you tried to find 58 modded Beyond Corrupted Promenade maps <laughs> right now, it would cost you way more than 20 chaos per map. So, again, this kind of takes into account, you, you're taking a smarter approach to it, you're being a little more patient, you're doing other farms, you're accumulating these maps on the side, you got a live search set up, you're buying some of the maps. For me, it was an average of about 20 chaos per map, probably less, honestly, because I, I found a lot of them. So, yeah. Let's get into the Atlas. Oh, one more thing I almost mentioned. Uh, heist stuff w w will not count. So, again, that, that's kind of the usual by the numbers. Heist stuff will not count. I will count gems. And I'm also going to count chronicles. Because on this farm, much to my own surprise, kind of had three points to play around with. You know, it was either put them in here in the wheel or go for the Alva Temples. Alva Temples sell for a lot this time of the season. We're, we're now on kind of the back end of the season. It's, uh, this I believe is like week eight or week nine of the season alva temples with uh, locus of corruption are going for almost 2x a piece doriana's institute 1x a piece combined it's well over 2x a piece uh and it, it's quite easy to get e at least one of those two rooms uh e each round of alva if you have these three points right here so these are the ones that that help you when you're upgrading the rooms like double upgrades or switch a room and upgrade it uh, makes a huge difference in my opinion without these three points you, you do a full round of an alva temple setup only about a 15 to 20 percent chance to get one of the two rooms that are worth something but with these points it, it's like completely flip it's like it's like opposite like 85 to 90 percent or maybe 80 percent chance to get one of those two rooms so because i have invested some points into this i am going to uh, kind of rejig the final tally and calculate the value of the chronicles that I get because I will definitely have some locus of corruptions and Doriana's institutes uh, at the end of this farm with as many alvas as I'm doing that will be there for sure also we're running uh, time dilation very good and I don't really have to run this but honestly one of the big reasons I run this is for more patient cards <laughs> patient cards are way more likely to drop from magic monsters than normal monsters so it's a good reason to drop it uh, pack size here is also very good for the Alpha Temple. So these Alpha incursions are just going to be <laughs> insanely good. Uh, th these are all the points you need for that. You don't need any of the points down here. Or, or this other stuff. It's just going to help you get more Alpha mission. Not necessary. Okay. And then we also have, you know, the shrines. 100% of the shrine nodes here. We got uh, Harbinger. I did uh, cut, cut a few corners in the Harbingers with the uh, number of... Currency shards that drop, so I'm not, I, I don't have the most premium Harbinger uh, drops you can get, but still pretty good. Also, another bonus reason to go Harbinger is that you get this wheel here in the middle. Yep, we got Beyond, all the Beyond there. We got all the pack size for the influence modifiers. We are running Eater of Worlds. I did test Conquer maps. Decided not to do it. Actually, I think 
the, the influence monsters from Conqueror maps way less. Way less uh, value out of that. Eater World really does seem the way to go for this season. Hopefully they balance Searing Exarch and Eater of World next season. Uh, for Abyss, two points here, four points here. Basically just getting more monsters out of the Abyss. Breach, again, only need three points. We're not trying to get Chayula Breaches. That's not even worth picking up the Splinters. I did try a lot of Legion, like I said, just a few points here. It was fun. It, it, it's not bad, but it does force you to, to use that Sextant to add an additional Legion to really be worth anything. To be a good strategy, you have to do that. So that's basically it. Oh yeah, uh, Delirium here. Of course, uh, the, these nodes here are basically mandatory for this farm. This helps slow the mirror down. You're going to see my mirror management is pretty good. I've done a lot of testing on here, so it, it's going to look pretty nice uh, when you see the run through. And if I were to drop any points in the Atlas, these would be the first points I would drop. Honestly, I got a lot of 300 Simulacrum Splinters already, so some of these points are a little bit wasted. I do kind of like the Delusion to Persecution, though, and... Again, it, it is it is helping me hit that 300 mark and stuff. But, you know, it, it would not be a terrible idea to drop three of these points, put them in here, and then drop a couple more and figure out some other place. Uh, to put, oh, uh, oh, I would one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, I guess I would drop six points, put three here in the quantity wheel, and the other three Harbinger ones I missed. That, that <laughs> might actually be superior. But we're going to go here. It's a little more entertaining to, to get a Delirium boss and 100% Delirious and just one-shot him. <laughs> That's kind of fun. Uh, speaking of which, when I hit the 100% Delirious mark, I need to, to do it correctly. Otherwise, I will I may lose that fight. Uh, if, my, if I don't have enough head hunter buffs um, stacked up, if I don't have uh, any shrine effects. So you're going to see me be very specific in how I go about particularly entering the last bit of the map. How we go into that. Uh, so it... it it's not something any character can do. You have to have a wildly powerful character. It needs to be strong, um, especially if you do a magic find hybrid. Before I made this character, I asked around on, like, on TFT. I asked for advice from different, some, you know, a few different content creators, few people who are knowledgeable about the game. And the overall sentiment I got is that it's probably not even doable. What I'm about to show you is essentially not doable, <laughs> on account based on account of, of, of numerous people I received. They were highly skeptical that this would be done. And what I what I mean by this, I mean running a magic find mapper that can get in and out full clear map in under 10 minutes. Uh, or, or like fully, or at, least, at the very least clear everything in like 5 minutes. Uh, not counting looting or whatever. Um, and successfully do that on like promenade mirror, deli mirror map with Alva and all kinds of mechanics uh, to do a map that fast uh, with a magic find character uh, people were highly skeptical of that so this is going to be really this is not this particular video unlike my cemetery farm may not have a, a, a lot of value to you if you're not basically rich <laughs> and you know ha have a good computer with a good connection and all that jazz uh, this video might be a little bit more for the entertainment side of things I think because uh, yeah I I, I it, basically, in every way possible, the cemetery farm is better. It's easier on your system. It's easier on the gearing. You can do it with a wide variety of different kinds of characters. Mapping, it's not extremely stringent on how fast you have to be able to clear stuff. You don't need an incredible amount of defense either. You don't have to have a really tanky character to do that farm. Uh, because you can clear a lot of stuff with just the shrines lasting as long as they do. Two minutes or whatever. For this one... You gotta be really tanky, you gotta do tons of damage, you gotta be extraordinarily fast. <laughs> and even then, I'm, I'm probably only gonna make, you know, 12, 13, 14, maybe 15x an hour. Uh, as a floor, though, not counting any jackpot drops, there probably will be about uh, maybe 14x an hour. Which is pretty good, actually, as uh, as an x per hour with, with uh, no jackpot drops here. One second here. I gotta... actually forgot to pull up the chat on here. Okay, I think that about sums it up. We're... we're gonna go on. Hmm. Phase one of the map. There's three phases to how I do this map. First, I'm gonna kinda somewhat casually clear 
from the beginning onward and actually loot at the same time. And then once I decide that it's time to hit hit the road and run all the way to the end, picking up the shrines, I would just blitz straight to the end of the map, skipping the league mechanics along the way. And then a the third phase of the map, after I've cleared everything in the back and 100% delirious section of the map, I will backtrack and do the mechanics like Abyss, Breach, uh, Alva. As I backtrack through the map, usually one or two mechanics actually get lost in the mirror. They don't, uh, I don't successfully uh, do those mechanics necessarily. But most of the time, it's pretty good. Again, a lot of testing been done for this. And I'm not going to make you guys wait anymore. Oops. I'm going to do one last snapshot here, a reset timer so we get an accurate hit. The average time it will take for me to full clear and fully loot the map will be about 8 to 10 minutes. Should be. And I'm expecting 4 to 5 patient cards per map. Expecting around 300 simulacrums per map. Expecting 12 to 14 X an hour. I'm, I might surprise myself. It might be better. Expecting about 26 links per map, which does mean that's the biggest thing about this. You know what? If I didn't have to constantly zone in and out of the map, I would probably make at least 16 X an hour if I didn't have to do that. But because of this six links taking up so much inventory space, yeah. Is what it is. So we're going to start with a warm-up map. <laughs> Only six modifiers. And very safe mods, I think. Except for Fizz's extra fire. Yeah. Okay, let's go. 712. I'm going to drink a water here. So what I don't want to see is major league mechanics and shrine the very front of the map. I'm hoping to see almost nothing on the front end of the map. Also have issues walking up the ramps. <laughs> Two patient cards already dropped, no surprise there. That's a six links. If this is your first time seeing this character in action, then just sit back, relax, enjoy. You're gonna see there's an exalted orb too. I mean, this is already looking pretty nice, opening. This is a machine of impeccable precision, this character I have built up. The POV will be linked in the description below. Uh, I, I am almost done with this character. I do have a few other things I want to do. I do plan to, per uh, to to make you know a couple more, like one more major upgrade maybe. So I'm already kind of stuck the mirrors on the front end there because I, I initiated the breach. Now I'm stuck on the map. Can't really progress further. Unfortunately, the six links kind of created a problem. So I want to loot here because I, I don't want to ever have to come back to this section of the map. Save a little bit of time if I do that. But normally I'm never going to be moving this slow. You're rarely ever going to see me move this slow. I'm kind of warming up, so that's, that's a thing right there. But here, we're going to pick up a shrine. That shrine sucks anyway. <laughs> I am actually going to do this Alva right here. Okay, and that will be... Where did I stop? These last 30 seconds are pitiful. That's really, really slow. But that's okay. Uh, it doesn't really matter a lot. It probably won't make any difference on the mirror and... As you can see, I'm still very strong at this point in the map because the delirium counter is only at like 20% or something. My character with 11 shots fired does about 12 million DPS uh, unbuffed. Of course, um, some people might say that particularly this season with the introduction of Omniscience, we're looking at what is probably the strongest headhunting scaling uh, class spec in the entire game right now. Which means that number I just said, 12 million DPS, not, an, not at all an accurate representation for true DPS characters. I mean, w once I get like 50 headhunter buffs, or even just like 20 headhunter buffs, <laughs> I'm just doing a stupid amount of damage at that point. 
as well as shrines. I mean, here, here's a uh, lesser action speed shrine. That's going to make me insanely strong for 50 seconds, 50 whole seconds. Oh, teleported way up there. Okay. Decided it's uh, blitz time. I'm gonna skip that Alva. I'll try to, I'm hoping I can get back there in time. So now I'm picking up the shrines. There's the Gloom Shrine. Uh, I do have uh, at least to put things in here. Okay, that's a resistance shrine. That's good. All right, this is actually really lucky here to have both abysses together like that towards the end of the map. All right, the map boss is already dead. All right, this is 100% delirious right here. I have 70 headhunter buffs ish, and I have a gloom shrine on, and everything's dying in, literally instantly. <laughs> like, you know, we, I don't even see the monsters. Like, beyond, beyond bosses that are spawning here, I don't even see them because they're just dying instantly. How strong this build is. Care about the rest of that right now. We're gonna trigger. We're gonna do these abysses here. Again, very lucky. These are both not only are they together, they're both out in the open here, so and they're near a breach which I can trigger at the same time. So this this is like best case scenario on the abysses. It's kind of weird that I only got two abysses because it's a very high chance I get extra ones. Okay, now you see a situation where my headhunter buffs have uh, been depleted. I got grasping vines on me really bad. Luckily, I have tons of life on hit. I'm barely able to snowball things back up. I got a bit careless there in that part of the map. I really need to have at least, like, I don't know, uh, 40. I, I feel like 40 is, like, the magic number. You got to have at least, like, 40 headhunter buffs or else uh, you, you're asking for pain sitting right at like 30 right now so that was a kind of a good showcasing right there you could see just how delicate the situation is with like having and if i if i didn't have the gloom shrine on right there i probably would have failed like i would have died and i would have lost the progress on that particular map no, i really don't think it's worth uh, finishing that abyss over there probably not At this point in the map is when I'm happy that I have Harbingers, and so there's probably a couple Harbingers still up. Yep, that are gonna help feed me some Headhunter buffs right here. See that? Now I'm suddenly fast and powerful again. So those Headhunter uh, buffs wouldn't have even been accessible to me if not for the fact that I was going uh, Harbinger. To, to, and I, I just picked them up like that in the snap of a finger. I just got like 20 or 30 Headhunter buffs. With the abyss and the breach, I almost died because they don't feed me the headhunter buffs nearly as efficiently as, as a harbinger does. See, the AG is very tanky in this stuff. Uh, I will probably lose my animate guardian at least once. Oh yeah, I forgot. I usually do one of these. I like to do one random arch nemesis because it pauses the mirror. It's like very effective for. Uh, mirror pausing here one other thing I've been testing a lot is what mechanics pause the mirror what mechanics uh, extend the mirror there's a difference there's 300 simulacrum splinters right there okay that's uh, easy easy going so now we are in the mode of looting everything my loot filter is actually tighter than it was last time I made a video. Now I'm basically only picking up anything worth one full chaos or above. I removed orbs of regret and val orbs, for example, are no longer on my loot filter. That would only slow me down. For some weird reason, these uh, corrupted chests are still on my loot filter, and I no way, no idea how to get them off because I've tried. <laughs> it's like some kind of weird. Hello miscommunication with the loop filter whatever Keep your life to your own. so here we go so it begins first deposit here what, what was that three oh, four patient cards already I think there's another couple to pick up there and see that that was not even the hardest kind of map or the juiciest kind of map that was only six modifiers and 28 percent 
pack size, so that's kind of weak, actually. So whether or not I would have lost the mirror at this point, I would have disabled the mirror because I don't want to be walking around here, you know, lollygagging, picking up six links, and then running into beyond bosses in 70% delirious. <laughs> I don't want that. That's just going to slow me down more, and it's not worth it. I already got 300 simulacrum splinters, so it would have really had basically no value at all. Uh, and, and if you were paying attention, you would have seen that while I didn't, like, clear a hundred percent of the map, the, the delirium sections of the map, I got most of it. I definitely got about all the value that I was going to get out of that. You know what, I'm just going to... Okay, so here we go. This is the part of the map, this is the part that annoys me the most here. <clears throat> One thing I love about the uh, cemetery farm... I don't have to deal with this right here. This is a lot of time. This is a lot of extra time lost. Oh, it's unusual gems. Right. Apparently, corrupted heist contracts are not don't lose value because they're corrupted. No. So there are going to be a lot of corrupted maps because unique monsters drop corrupted items. This is that's patient card number five. Okay, and that map's done, and it was about, uh, I think it took me about, I'm hello. it was either 10 or 11 minutes to Farewell. do that. I was a little slow, and I will be faster next time. Oh, seven, seven patient cards. Okay, that that's actually pretty good RNG. It's very good RNG, considering it was uh, six. There we go. Job well done. This is such a good execution. This is easily my best executed map, except I literally forgot to pick up a shrine there. Wow. That will only slow down. Four five and a half minutes. And Three I barely days. have anything left to loot. Really. Well. As far as like pathing is concerned. Okay, so this jewel is 80, ah, 84, 3, mass, yeah, this is, this is a huge jewel, actually, this, 6 or 7x, okay, that's a 7x cluster jewel, <laughs> damn, well, that's probably the most expensive cluster base in the game, high level 84, small mana res, Three slot cluster jewel. That will only slow me down. I think that's the cluster jewel for uh, our stackers. Greetings. Keep your life to your own. I'm not up to that. Stuff to lose. Hello. Perfect spell side. I I don't think that's worth anything though. I don't know, maybe it is. Farewell. Let's put that here, I guess. Mantra of Flames is a perfect spell damage roll. I don't know if that's worth anything. Oh, I forgot to undo the Malacrum. What am I doing? Silly, silly guy. Bonus shrine map. Oh my 
my god, it's gonna be a lot of patient cards. I'm not even concerned about dying personally. I'm afraid he's gonna die. We're all exalted orb. Easy. Hundred percent deli. Okay, complete mockery of it. How you doing, ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> gotta do what you gotta do. An invulnerability shrine, I didn't even know that. Haha, <laughs> I got it to spawn on top of the thing. Nice. The uh, ritual's done. Started and it's done. And it's gone. <laughs> I mean, can I actually click that? There are monsters everywhere! What? <laughs> so weird. 100% deli again! Oh no! A breach! In an abyss! And I'm trying to maneuver my character. Not so successfully. Hmm. Only the abyss means. My headhunter buffs are gonna go down. Let's get out of here. I'm outy. Something left to do, right? Isn't there like an alpha left? Alpha version, maybe? No? <laughs> Got these six things over here. Uh, I don't even know, man. Let's do this for fun, I guess. Huh. Oh! Right here. Oh my god, it, it keeps spawning rooms right next to the corruption chamber. It will not give me the corruption chamber. 
I think that's it. Uh, I may fail this. This kind of needs some life regen. Ooh, made it. Usually, uh, grass combined is not, not a big deal. At least not when I'm already flying through the map. Harvest! Don't care. <laughs> Do not care about it at all. Even even now, even My in this gone. type of map with I know there's delirium monsters down there, there's zombies, the harvest, it's still not worth it. It's not worth it. it takes too much time. I did a, I did one map earlier with harvest and it added like four minutes to my timer. I was like forget that. What? <laughs> I'm at the beginning of the map. The delirium mirrors barely even started expiring. 300! At the portal. <laughs> That's how you do it. That's how I do it anyway. Yeah, I mean, the um, light helped a little bit, but very front of the map and now we got to use about five portals to get 36 links out of here I guess greetings oh my god this is this is a really uh, expensive cluster, I think. Maybe not really expensive, actually. That would only slow me down. Greetings. Journey well. What do we have here? Oh, it is. Yeah, 3x cluster. So, I'm actually using this cluster. This is this is the cluster I use. This is a 12, 884 plus. You can see what you can do with this cluster jewel. I mean, m mine's almost perfect. It would be perfect if it had 5 chaos res. And I'm actually really looking for one. I would pay like 50x if I had. Or maybe even 100x if I could find one for with 5 chaos res. Um, my character has 0 chaos res right now. So, if I, if I could get... I would get... 12 more chaos res if I if I had that one more increment it would be pretty huge for me actually um, but you can see here this is just incredible value per point 16% increased damage with bows 13 max life 5 chaos res with the boost there and uh, 10 strength or 10 omniscient absolutely insane uh, huge value cluster so that's what's possible with a cluster jewel like this and that is a 3x cluster jewel right there so that is the second uh, big drop. I, I didn't really, it didn't really occur to me that the the, ja <laughs> the sort of jackpot drops I would be getting would be actually be cluster jewel bases. Um, but that makes sense to me now, now that I think about it. Okay, guys, it is time for the results. Got you tab A here. This is the conclusion of the first farming session which is 25 maps in a row i have pulled the breach rings that's why you see holes in there uh basically deleted anything in there that wasn't actually worth hardly anything uh then we had the other day the second or actually this is day one and then this is day two uh so almost identical amount of loot between the two days of course and it's very consistent level of loot you'll see quite a few uniques in there of course I'm running a magic fine character i'm gonna find some uniques uh here and there and just tons and tons of currency, tons of maps, it's a lot of different stuff. Uh, I am counting the maps uh, as their normal value. Some they're valued around one, maybe two chaos apiece. I do sell maps all the time, and of course, especially the favorited ones, uh, will sell quite a bit, or I may roll them. 
And uh, this is offset slightly by the fact that I'm not counting any of the high stuff as uh, usual. We got a lot of different high stuff. We definitely got some, uh, I don't know, repository is worth the most. These are all worth at least like 50 chaos um, regardless uh, with that. So, you know, I do see a total of four repository contracts in there. I, I just don't count them because, uh, again, they kind of offset the fact that it's kind of hard to sell all the maps in there so that's kind of how i run that uh yeah let's see here we got uh another dump tab here dump tab c so we're target farming some sort of specialized things that don't get tabulated properly into the excellence app uh breach wings of course is one now this this is true for my cemetery farm as well i went ahead and uh, transformed uh, 60 of the breach wings over to grasping males uh, three times and now i will value these at a at a value of two chaos per breach wings. Uh, if you if you identify a grasping male and it comes out to uh, global 100% global increased defenses, I've been selling them for five to six k uh, five to six x a piece now. If you don't get that mod, it's usually worthless. Uh, but uh, anyway, I, I am identifying them right now because I think uh, that it, it's better to do it that way. But generally speaking, I kind of just sell the breach wings. Uh, that's why. I do sometimes depending on what the market's doing so for the sake of this i'm valuing them at two chaos a piece uh then we have all the gems i leveled now i did not quite level 100 percent of these gems up there are a few that came kind of close but not quite there i went ahead and valed all the ones i didn't have and you know most of them stayed at three a couple went down to two uh did hit two of them for level four this was anticipated i averaged uh, or i anticipated two maybe three uh, if I had had a chance to vow all of these, probably would have got three to go up to tier four. That's a value of four X a piece. Now these will be classified as major drops. So uh, as far as the floor is concerned, I'm not going to count these. But as far as the currency I made in this one, I am counting them. And it's pretty deterministic. You got like a 15% chance to, to go up to uh, level four on there. We also have Temple Chronicles. Uh, day one was absolutely horrible. I didn't get a single locus of corruption in day one. Day two, I got, I think, three. There may be four locus of corruption, more uh, fit to standard. So those are all there. And then I got three, only three big drops. And they were all cluster jewels. So, like, if I'm farming cemetery, I'm not running delirium. I, I don't even count cluster jewels. Uh, because they're, they're super random. You're har hardly ever going to get a uh, major cluster jewels. However... For this farm, I see gobs and gobs and gobs of cluster jewels. So naturally, I'm going to occasionally hit hit a really big one. Uh, the biggest one is this one here. This is an item level 84. Mana reservation efficiency, three passive skills. This is worth 7x. You can see it right here. Um, maybe this stupid thing will come up here. Maybe now it will. Okay, they can go basically 7x for that one. Uh, let's see, this is the same thing except with only two passives. <laughs> that goes way down to 50 chaos. And then you can see the um, this is a 12 passive bow skills, 84 plus. This is this is a cluster jewel that I use in my POB. You would see it's basically 3x or very close to it. I counted all these as a total of 10x these major drops. They will not be counted towards the floor. Uh, I have a little bit of a cheat sheet here I already made. Uh, so I got this prepared up here. So Cluster Jewels 10x. Uh, Cluster Jewels. All, and, and there were no other big drops. I didn't get any inspired or um, unnatural instincts or anything. Uh, kind of depressingly. Uh, surprisingly didn't get a single uh, unique that was worth more than an X. I mean I, I saw countless numbers of leather belts. Uh, heavy belts. Countless numbers of unique Viridian Jewels. And just didn't, get, didn't get anything. <laughs> I uh, probably missed a few scrolling over. Uh, but anyway, uh, I went ahead and, and figured out, you know, the price of all these uh, chronicles, depending on what they roll. Locus of Corruption is worth uh, 1.7 or so. Dorian is Institute's worth about half an X. And you can kind of see here, uh, there's quite a few of these in here. I think only one of them is worth a little less. Uh, where it was just like a Apex of Ascension or whatever, like. 30 chaos. Anyway, uh, the total value of Temple Chronicles is 8.9x. So yeah, I went ahead and added that in there. Uh, breach breach rings, uh, total of 2.2x. So these are the kind of these are all, these all comprise of the items that uh, will not be registered by the Excellence app, but 
And I am absolutely counting them for this farm because again, we were target farming clusters. They're part of the target farm. I was, you know, leveling gems like in a pretty serious way for this farm. It's just so much, so many maps, a lot of juice, a lot of gem leveling. And uh, I, I really like the enhanced leveling gem uh, process uh, because you don't lose anything if you corrupt them. You know, as far as like you level the gem, it's fairly fast and you, you pay, you sell it for the same amount. You can sell it level three corrupted for the same amount that you buy at level one uncorrupted, unlike some of the other uh, gems like that. Uh, and Chronicles, obviously, since we were literally specced into Temple Chronicle improvements, I am counting those as part of... Five. So I think, you know, 10x, I probably would have got maybe 1x of value from Temple Chronicles on average out of all those maps, maybe 2x. So, yeah, do I think 8 or 9x worth... Uh, <laughs> for 50 maps for, for those three passive points absolutely I think I think that's good value and you know it's kind of fun you know, I used to make these uh, temples a long time ago and uh, it's a farm that I haven't been able to do and that's one of the great things about the new atlas is that you can spend only three passive points and then do a farm that is not technically juicing up the map more uh, but, but it can still be very lucrative in the marketplace uh, so I, I do really like that chain couldn't do that before because I would have had to have sacrificed running beyond or strong box or something uh, to make these temple chronicles. So I just never did it uh, except for the first season that I played. Yeah. So uh, I did go ahead and deposit an amount of currency into the tab C here uh, to cover all of the sort of bonus um, currency that I made via gems, chronicles, clusters, and breach rings. So that's included in there. We had a total investment of 41.2x, if you recall. Uh, you can see here that I'm looking at 201.26 exalts. Uh, exalts still sitting pretty at, what is it, 30, 173 chaos per. So they're still sitting stable. There's no crazy movement with exalted orbs yet. They will be moving down uh, fairly soon, though, I think. Uh, okay, and then we had a, a net profit of 160 exalts, and the time it took. Okay, so the time, I, I did time my runs. Um, I was very consistently getting around 10 minutes per, uh, including looting time and uh, in, even including time in the hideout. Now, I don't spend hardly any time in the hideout, but yeah, I got a lot of six things. I had to constantly go in and out of the hideout. That hurts the time a little bit, but, you know, all things considered and adjusting the time accordingly uh, we were looking at around 10 I uh, can't really read this now since I divided this into two days but uh, yeah about 10 minutes per map you can check the uh, the twitch uh, stream if you want uh, to verify that it was all in there I have part one and then part two there but there part one will be linked in the description below and then you can you know see and that I ran 25 maps I started at this time and I finished at that time and if you do the math you're gonna see it was like Basically, two to ten minutes uh, per map. Yeah, uh, slightly. I was just smidge over. So ten minutes per map would have actually been eight minutes and twenty minutes, or eight hours and twenty minutes total. So I went ahead and just threw it up ten minutes. So eight hours and thirty minutes total. Exalts x per hour. So there we go. If we take one hundred and sixty. Divided by the total of 500, in this case 510 minutes, <laughs> that's what 8 hours and 30 minutes is, 510 minutes, uh, or rather, no, I don't do it that way, I say x per hour, not per minute, so 160x divided by 8.5 hours, we have a total of 18.8 X per hour. Uh, X per hour floor. Okay, so what's the floor in this one? So the floor is I take out the clusters and the gems. So I do 160 minus 18. 160 minus 18 and we divide it by again 8.5. And you can see that the floor is still quite high. 16.7 uh, X per hour. 
Uh, and that's because this is a very consistent farm. So again, there's no brother stash, no crazy uh, high value divination card that we're chasing uh, that is inherent to the map. The only sort of jackpot hits are kind of things that are just super random. Like if I had found an unnatural instinct, that would be a jackpot drop. Uh, the cluster jewels. I am got dropping a lot of cluster jewels, but I mean, come on, let's face it, a seven x cluster jewel. That's obviously a jackpot drop. Uh, yeah, so you're not going to see that every time. I mean, if you run 50 maps like this, you're probably going to get at least one significant jackpot drop. Could have very well got a mage blood or uh, a headhunter. Could have very easily seen one of those. I mean, I, I saw hundreds of unique belts. I mean, I, I effectively used like 300 ancient orbs or 500 ancient orbs on belts, you know, or more <laughs> based on how many of those I saw just by running these maps. So, yeah, the, the uh, closing thoughts, uh, final thoughts on this farm. I'm actually kind of surprised at the numbers. I, I didn't think it was going to come out this high when I did some testing. I, I test like 16 maps at once, uh, maybe like eight maps at once I, I did a lot of testing on like non-corrupted maps though like non eight modded maps only uh four or five or six modded maps and that makes a huge difference so yeah when you get that pack size up an extra 10 or 15 percent more pack size uh makes a big difference in uh how, how much stuff drops how much currency you get also uh i'm quite delighted to announce that i did not fail a single map except for one i partially failed one i didn't fail really fail any maps from a delirium standpoint i think the lowest number of simulacrum splinters i got was about 150 got a 300 simulacrum splinters time and time again i'd say probably almost half of them with 300 i got a ton of like 250 to 300 so i felt really good about that uh yeah so i did fail one map uh ran out of portals when it came to looting and I had to leave seven six links behind. Seven six links behind. So let's see how many divine orbs I got. 1,043 divine orbs in 50 maps. So, and that's leaving, that's leaving some behind. I definitely got, I definitely got nowhere near 43 raw divine orbs. So what that means is I got over a thousand six links in 50 maps. Uh, if we take this divided by 50, we can see that I averaged well over 20 six links per map. So that is pretty awesome there. Uh, raw X. So let's see. I'll take minus uh, 29. So if I go in here and I look at, uh, that'd be another one, right? Exalted orbs. So I see 43. Minus 29. Yeah, it, it's it's not that many, is it? <laughs> I, I think uh, I was a little surprised at how few raw X I got. You know, I probably should minus like another two at least for the Harbinger shard. So probably only got maybe 12 raw X. On average, like one per every six map. I was kind of expecting about one every three maps. At least. Maybe one every other map. <laughs> On I did have one map where I got two, actually, but uh, yeah, that came out. And the other big thing that we were searching, of course, is patient, patient cards. Let's see here. I got 177 divided by 50, so we can see that's an average of 3.5 patient cards. I'm fairly satisfied with that. Uh, a lot of people brag about getting, like, one patient card per map, so <laughs> that, that, that feels pretty nice. That was with a Gilded Divination Scarab. Clearly worth it because we're also getting uh, Dying Anguish. A uh, total of 205. Oh, wow. I, I thought Patient Card was technically more common than Dying Anguish. Huh. Interesting. Uh, so Patient Card coming, clocking in about 24 Chaos per. And actually, what? How many Patient? So that's not enough to get me a Headhunter. But, uh, you know, that that's... I think that's like a third of a headhunter <laughs> right there. I think it's like what, it's 512 patient cards, I think. Get you one headhunter. Anyway, um, yeah, so this is this is kind of surprising results. So we're looking at, uh, I don't know, 15 to, 15 to 19 X per hour or something like that. 16 to 20 X an hour, I guess. 19 X an hour, yeah, 15. 15 to 19, 16 to 19 X an hour, 15, 19 X an hour, something like that. Uh, again, so that is quadruple beyond, 40% beyond on the map. That is with Alva, that's with Abyss, Harbinger, uh, 
blanking out on it. Uh, breach. And that is running, going in and out of the map in 10 minutes flat. Basically, 10 minutes flat. So that's a hard part. That's a really hard part. Uh, that is challenge. <laughs> it's one thing to just kind of autopilot through cemetery. You know, get the shrines as you go. You only spend two or three minutes in the map because you just kill everything with all the shrines. Much more challenging to manage the shrines, manage the 100% delirious section of the map. I really enjoy the high skill cap play that this, uh, this particular strategy involves. Uh, but for how little extra currency per hour this strategy made compared to the cemetery strategy uh I, I don't think it's worth it it's definitely not worth it not worth doing as as the as a core primary strategy so i enjoyed doing this as sort of a one-off thing and to see how much currency per hour made i even surprised myself i was expecting about 14 15 x an hour uh, apparently it came out to 18 x an hour almost 19 x an hour for me um what that really tells me though that what that really tells me is that my character, if I if I were to take this exact character with the magic fine gear on and everything, and I go, went back into the cemetery and did a hundred maps in there again, I'd probably do twenty x an hour <laughs> in there. Uh, so guess what? That's what uh, some of the next content's going to be. That's kind of my final big project of of the season. I think will be. Uh, I'm kind of deciding back in my head. I think I'm going to do. I think I'm going to do 500 maps, cemetery maps, uh, to, 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 you know, to help appease the people who look at, oh, brother stash drop rates and stuff. So, I don't know, I think 100 maps gets you a fairly accurate representation of brother stash, but, you know, it is a pretty rare card. So, maybe out of 500 maps, that's a little bit more of an accurate <laughs> representation. If I do 500 maps of cemetery, and if I manage to farm 20x an hour doing that, uh, that should turn some heads. <laughs> That really should turn some heads. Uh, but hey, you know, that's what uh, having an actual magic meta magic find mirror tiered character uh, can get you. It can really uh, get you that little bit of extra on there. So let me know what you guys think. Uh, is this a type of farm you would be interested in doing? I thought this was more for an entertainment purposes than it was for trying to help, you know, share with you guys what I, I think you might want to try for yourself. I, I don't plan to do this one again. I am thinking about doing uh, promenade mirror farming again, though with the exact same strategy I use on Cemetery. So very low juice, super fast in and out of the map. I was able to test run about 11 or 12x an hour doing that. Uh, very fun, actually quite fun. So I just, you know, I start the map and literally just race to the boss. Uh, usually the mirror will extend all the way there. And I just kind of run back and do the mechanics on the way back. And then I loot everything back to forward. So it's like there, back, and there again. Uh, with a fast, default fast run uh, speed raider. Uh, it, it works. It works fairly well, but it's not as good as cemetery. But I mean, it's kind of fun because you have that extra sextant you can use. And you can make that extra sextant delirium mirror if you want. Uh, so it's not about finding unique monsters, drop corrupted items, it's, you know, you're not going in and out of the map, <laughs> looting and, uh, depositing stuff in inventory and selling to the vendor. That's the biggest thing I didn't like about this, uh, farm. If there's one thing I did not like about this farm, it was, uh, all the taking the portal back out and stuff. And that really hurts with, like, the shrines, you know, sometimes I'd have, like, a... A lesser acceleration shrine, I just get it, and then I'd have to port out because <laughs> I have to, you know, sell six six links right away. Uh, yeah, so cemetery, basically cemetery farm superior in virtually every way. I mean, I guess it's technically inferior in the X per hour potential, um, at least as far as I know currently. Um, cemetery is way safer, uh, way less requirement as far as the gear is concerned as far as tankiness and damage is concerned uh way easier to not f up you know you can anytime you do a deli mirror map you might f it up and then lose a lot of value uh, by getting hardly any uh, simulacrum uh way easier as far as like the portals so if you die a few times and don't actually f up the map but if you die like two or three times or three or four times at the beginning of the map you don't even have enough portals that carry everything back out kind of like when we did like ultra juice nemesis 3 uh, farming so that is also you know a, a thing to consider and obviously this farm is just it just requires so much more focus because you have to like you have to figure out where all the mechanics are you have to you know i'm trying to do like two abysses 
that are like way spread apart on the map while opening a breach on a separate section and then while Alva is right here and then I'm gonna figure out when to go into there and got to make sure I have at least so many headhunter buffs or else I might die if uh, you know if it's uh, like 70 80 90 percent delirious in that section of the map a lot of, of, of uh, calculations going on in the head so high skill cap enjoyable to an extent but as far as the long term you know let's just sit back relax and you know enjoy kind of a fairly got you know kind of god mode easy farming session that makes a lot of currency per hour mm, yeah a little bit it basically if you liked nemesis 3 farming where you spent like 40 minutes in a map looting and stuff and like it was just so intense <laughs> to get through all that uh if you like that you might like this but uh yeah that's all i got on this one uh, thank you guys for watching, and as always, stay tuned for the next video. We'll get some more, uh, more big farming videos out, so yeah, see you for now.